All right. Looks like we are good to go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Biz Solutions channel. And uh, today we're going to have a chat with uh, another one of my, uh, my mates in business. Uh, Paul has been a, a longtime friend and he's uh, done work with us uh, over the years on, on various projects. Um, he is a business coach and he specializes in uh, cash flow management, I suppose. So it's a cash flow coach. Is that the, um, is that the right title, Paul? That sounds pretty good, Dan. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, look, getting this twice. Are you able to hear that coming through the channel, Paul? Yeah, that's all good. Got a little bit of an echo, but it's all good. Yeah, there is an echo. Let me just see if I can do something about that. Okay, that's much better. Awesome. All right, matey. Um, so, mate, I just wanted to uh, catch up. I'm doing this with a, a few of my mates around town. Um, the uh, COVID-19 has uh, been shutting down and affecting a whole range of businesses. Um, we are certainly not immune. Immigration, the, uh, the borders have been closed, what nationally and also here in, in Western Australia as well. Uh, and that's, that's affecting the movement of people. Um, but more importantly, uh, a number of businesses are being shut down around the country. They're experiencing conditions that we probably haven't seen since 1929, the Great Depression, pretty much. It's probably yep. a one in a 100 year event, I suppose. Um, and uh, all the clients that I've been talking to have been wondering what, what the hell they're doing, what to do about um, in this situation, how to handle it, uh, where do you start? Now, I, uh, I talk to them just about the immigration aspect, where they've got sponsored workers or temporary workers or uh, working holiday makers of any sort, and they want to know how those employees are affected. But um, they, they, they've got a lot more issues, Paul, and um, you know they don't know where they should start uh, discussions with the landlord, how they should negotiate the rent, um, how they're going to manage cash flow. Mate, a lot, a lot of these businesses, uh, particularly in the hair and beauty industry association, and a lot of other retail businesses, their um, their revenue hasn't dropped thirty percent; it's dropped to zero. They have zero foot traffic coming through. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the government's saying they need to go on a hibernation and then pop out the other end in six months' time. Well, uh, I don't know where that's coming from. Um, I don't think business operates like that. But uh, mate, what, what are you seeing with your client base? I mean, you've, um, you're coaching a lot of businesses through this. Um, what are you saying to them? Look, Dan, there's a lot of, there's a lot of businesses, um, and not so much in my client base, because my client base is fairly well protected, Um they're not in necessarily in industries that are affected down to zero, um, zero turnover at the moment. But for those that are, if you're in a business like you're in travel, you're a, you're a hairdresser or whatever, it's um, in the health and beauty stakes, I mean, um, you, you've got significant challenges at the moment and you might as well just go into hibernation. That's unfortunately uh, the way it is. Mm. And... I suppose from a from a business perspective, um, if you can't pivot into something else easily, uh, mm. you're fairly well stuck. Of it. If you if you're uh, Qantas, for example, there's not a lot you can do with the planes on the ground when you can't really get people to fly overseas at the moment. You're fairly yeah, you well. see, that's the thing that that term pivot. I mean, it's a it's a it's a bit cute in a lot of ways. I mean, man, I've got one client who um, has a, a high end hairdressing salon in a five star hotel. The hotel has less than ten percent occupancy. They've got zero foot traffic and she's had that business for 30 years. She's standing down, you know, all, all of her employees. Um, I honestly didn't know what to say to her. And look, that's, that's a real hard one, Dan. That's a really difficult one because unless you can do something with the business, unless you can change the fundamentals of getting foot traffic or, you know, trying to bring people in some other way, there's mm. not a lot you can do. Mm -hmm. If you know this concept of hibernation, Paul, have you heard it before? I mean, you, you've got your accounting background, you're, you're a CPA um, you know, in, in another yep. life, but is this, is this a term that has, um, has been used elsewhere? I mean, it's, it's new to me as an economist or a previous economist. Um, I don't recall ever using the term hibernation. No, no, I've, I'd never heard it used in, in this context before, Dan. As you say, it's once in a lifetime. It's really mm. unique and really... Um, Un highly unusual circumstances for this mm. to be happening. Yeah. Mm. So what are you seeing in your client base, man? What's, um, what's happening in your world? Look, what, I, what I'm seeing is probably 
um, four different types of outcomes people are looking at at the moment. Mm. So the first outcome of the one you were just talking about in terms of there's not much we can do with the business, we go into hibernation. Um, for, for my client base, that's, you know, it's a rare event at the moment because I just don't happen to be coaching in those industries. The mm. second one is the, is, is the business owners that are, that are just hanging on. They're bumbling along in this, not sure what to do. I might make a bit of money. I might lose a bit of money. I might have some losses, but I can sustain them until some point in time when we come out of this. Mm. and no one really knows when we're going to come out or how quickly we're going to, once we do come out, how we start to get back to the new normal. Mm. Mm. There's a second, uh, the third type, I think, are the ones that can see that all they need to do is hang on and they know once we come out of the new normal, we'll, uh, to the new normal, we'll, they'll start making money again. Mm. Mm. And then there's those at the moment that are absolutely booming and about a third of the businesses out there are doing extremely well. Mm. Give me an idea of who's making money. What uh, what are you seeing out there? Um, IT at the moment. If you're moving people out of an office and setting them up at home, or you improve communications yeah. in the workplace, whatever, uh, yeah. abs absolutely flat flat strap. Um, and the whole online space, um, the whole digital space, yeah, yeah, um, is is pretty solid. Mm. Um, cleaning is pretty big. I've got got some cleaners out there that are booming at the moment. Uh, they've they've had to do a little bit of a pivot, like change their product offering, change their service delivery method, had to recruit online, all those sorts of things that go with it. Um, but they've responded pretty quickly and they and they're doing pretty well. Mate, just on cleaning, that's an interesting one because I um, the national uh, well, it was national association representing cleaners got in touch with me, and they were concerned because a large part of their workforce are international students, temporary visa holders, working backpackers, um, and a whole bunch of people who do the, you know, I, I shouldn't say lower end, but lo lower end work, because cleaning is generally considered to be that. But in the current environment, uh, sterile, a sterile environment and cleanliness is like our first line of defense. You know, I mean, I'm washing my hands every time I go to a different room. Yeah. And um, so what they're, they're facing, they're, like you're saying, they're, they're experiencing boom conditions, but at the same time, um, the Prime Minister's gotten up and told all of their labour force to go home. Correct. And that's put, in, that's put a massive pressure on the businesses. Mm. They've, mm. and, and it's really difficult because a lot of them are struggling with the concept of, hey, I've lost my experience in my workforce. Mm. How do I go out and gain that experience? Are the people that are looking for work necessarily matching the skill set of what I'm looking for? Mm. And... I think on the whole, there's been a lot of retraining happening very quickly, mm -hmm. which has presented yeah. the next challenge for people. Hey, they, yeah, they've got, to, they've got to recruit people and they've lost skill sets in their workforce, which has made it hard. But mm -hmm. now they go in the marketplace, they can't get experience in the yeah. industries, but there's a lot of people looking for work. Mm -hmm. So they've had to train really quickly and online mm -hmm. how, to, how to skill people. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? Because you know what will happen is the unemployment rate will continue to climb. I mean, there is some talk about it tripling in the next few months, uh, which would just be devastating. But then yep, you've got absolutely. local supply of labour, which, as you say, is going to be a mismatch in their skills for what's required. So you're effectively going to be left with, yes, we have people who are domestic and they're available, but they don't have the skill set. So you're going to have to come up with some uh, retraining program of some sort. Look, absolutely. And there was talk on the news the other night of a lot of people from Qantas that had been stood down mm. um, at the moment have, have, have moved across to Woolies. Like there was thousands of people from memory. Mm. Um, mm. There's a whole retraining of people that are, you know, probably used to sitting behind a desk or talking to customers face to face or all of a sudden filling shelves of a night. Yeah, you see, that's the other that's thing, it. Paul, isn't it? I mean, they, the jobs that they're going to, they're not high end. I mean, being a Correct. shop stacker at Coles or Woolies... Um, you know, that's, um, I, I just, there's, there's no career there. there. There's no longevity. This is very much a short term thing, right? Absolutely. And that's, that's the bit I don't really, or still trying to get to grips with how the labor force looks in a few months time when we start coming out of this, what happens to everybody when they start going back to where they were in the economy and how quickly mm. does that move? And are all those positions still there? Mm -hmm. We saw a little bit of that in WA at the end of the, the last resources boom. We, um, at, least, at least I did when, uh, you know, we do a lot of work for mining, resource, oil and gas. And yep. at the end of 2014, all the work dropped, the, um, 
the contract stopped, all of a sudden the projects were completed, they moved from the construction phase to the operational phase. And so all these people weren't needed anymore and there wasn't that, another sort of resources boom to move on to. And then what we've found, even though it started to pick up in 2018, 2019, is that those people had left the industry. They had to, I mean, they, they had to, and there's a five year yep. hiatus. You have to do something to put food on the table. So yep. they had either gone back east, they'd gone back overseas, they'd gone back, they'd been doing something else. And so the skill set is, uh, is depleted. It's, not, it's just not there anymore. And I think we're seeing the same happening now, aren't we? If we've um, closed the borders in, in WA, we're seeing a lot of FIFO that's were from different states, mm. causing, causing all sorts of challenges for the workforce now. Mm. Mate, um, just getting back to the, uh, the main sort of focus for you in terms of the cash flow, how do you manage the cash flow? Um, for those clients that have seen um, zero, uh, so their, their revenue is down to zero at least for a period of time while this lockdown is in place, um, what advice do you give them? What do you tell them? Look, it's, it's be wonderful to have 2020 hindsight and to be able to say, yeah, I've kept I've kept some cash reserves in play um, over the years, and I've built up three to six months worth of cash reserves. And that would be awesome if you're in that situation. You're sitting with money in the bank. Uh, you can tighten um, your spending, and you'll probably survive the the six months. If yeah. you haven't, and you haven't got revenue, then the question is, what is available in terms of subsidies from the government? Yeah. Is number one. There's a whole stack out there. Whether you can, whether you can get them or not, is a good mm. question. Yeah. Because um, I think some of them are still going through Parliament, and they still haven't finalised the final rules on them. Uh, the oh, second I one. I thought it uh, it all went through last night. It didn't all go through last night. Is that correct? Uh, I think that's gone through, but I think there's some other um, there's some other subsidies going to be released at some stage. Yeah. Right. Okay. Both state and federal level sort of mm. fill some gaps of what they've got at the moment. So. Yeah, right. Um, okay. Sort of hoping that comes through. Okay, um, so what, what are your other tips? Um, the government subsidies, for sure. Uh, at the earliest, they might come through in May, uh, end of May, perhaps, I suppose. I, I, I'll be honest with you, mate. I, I don't trust government. They, they tell you that it's coming, it's going to help you. And then when you go to qualify for it, um, they find some reason. It's like dealing with insurance companies, mate. They find some Pretty reason much, isn't it? why you don't qualify. <laughs> And then for the last six weeks, you've kept all of your people on because you, you had this faith that it's coming down the track. And then uh, you get somebody telling you, I'm sorry, you don't qualify, therefore uh, we can't pay you. Look, this, this, um, this world situation has happened fairly quickly and it's caught a lot of business owners by surprise and it's caught a lot of governments by surprise. Mm. And I think the number one thing that, um, I'm encouraging and working with all my clients to do is to put a plan in place on how they see their business looking moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're not planning, you're probably reacting. Mm. And if you're reacting, you may or may not be making good choices at the moment. Mm. If you're holding, if you're holding on to staff and your business can't support them, even with, proposed subsidies or without subsidies really made really need to make some decisions about how your business model looks moving forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of businesses are, are, are making some silly mistakes at the moment oh, yeah. because yeah. they are reacting. Mm. A lot of them have stopped their marketing, for example. Yeah. I would have thought at the moment you'd be marketing pretty hard if you had a business that has got revenue streams coming in. Jeez, man, it's funny you should say that. I, um, I, I one of our clients um, does the uh, the pamphlets into the letterboxes. I yeah. won't say who it is, but yep. um, they reckon that um, from a theoretical point of view, everyone's working from home. Everyone seems to have plenty of time on their hands. You would bombard the mailbox with as much um, advertised material as possible, right? Uh, they're, they're heavily uh, into the real estate area, I guess, yep. um, but. They, um, they can't seem to convince their clients that now's the time to do marketing, which is just bizarre because um, the logic will tell you, uh, you might as well let people know what you can do and that you're still open for business, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. You should be going harder than ever before. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you've got a business and it's operating and you can trade, look, it's one of those things, you're going to have to trade your way out of it. 
you is can't it, you um, can't cost cut your way out. It's it's a real it's, it's a real an sales interesting mentality, isn't it? That rather than going for revenue growth, they're going for cut the cost base as much as they can. And uh, I mean, we all know that you know you can't hold um, home opens in the real estate market at yep. the moment. Yep. Okay. So that yeah, that's fine. Maybe you can do it virtually. Um, maybe you can try and sell virtually. There's some other way that you can do it. But um, but I think you're right. If you market it and you go for the revenue, you find some way of rebuilding it um, because the cost cutting is only going to help you so far, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you if you do have to cost cut. Cost cut everyone in one go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't don't string it out. Don't don't make it a long process. If you've got to make changes, make changes fast. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're going to need cash. Mm-hmm. That's that's your survival mechanism, and it and it always has been. Cash has always been king. Mm-hmm. So if so you're trading, how do you, it, how do you know that when? Uh, well, I suppose there isn't really a step down in activity. Um, well, I suppose for some businesses, still coming through. But uh, when you say, you know, make the, um, the cuts or make the changes quick and fast, um, is that in re- response to the fall you've seen in revenue? Or what, what if you're seeing a step down in activity? It's just sort of slowly bleeding away. Look, and I've, I've, got, that, I've got that with my clients at the moment. I've, yeah. A few of my clients at the moment where they have had this 20 30% drop in revenue. Yes, we're talking to the landlords. Yes, we're talking to the banks. We're putting loans on hold and all those things that you can do. But if we mm. have to drop staff, we're, mm. we're making the cuts in one hit. So mm-hmm. if, we've got to let it, if we've got to stand down a couple of team members, well, then we do it in one hit. Mm-hmm. It's about what's, what's your plan to move forward and what's your plan to trade out of this? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think that a lot of the stress that's happened in the last three or four weeks has put people's headspace into a point where they struggle to think clearly on this. Mm. And they're struggling to actually see the future or see what's happening. Mm. And if you look at them in, in, a, in a continuum of, um, you know, there's businesses that are going down at the moment, there's those that are holding, those that are going up and those that are going up steeply. Mm. Um, it's about how do you get to the next line? Mm. Mm. If you are you know, downhill and you are delivering stuff to people's letterboxes, how do you get up to the break even? Mm-hmm. If you're at a break even, how do you move forward so you can trade profitably? Mm-hmm. If you are trading profitably, how do you go even harder so you can grow, you know, you can start to grow in this time? Because there are a lot of businesses out there that are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're up, you know, 20, 30, 40% at the moment, some of them. Mm-hmm. Some of them even more. Some of my mates are telling me that now's the time to grab a whiteboard and just reinvent your business from the ground up. Um, Working from home, lower costs, um, what you can sell in the current market, where you think it's going to come back. I mean, on the immigration side, the the movement of people has stopped because, you know, we're trying to flatten the curve with COVID-19. So that's that's understandable. Um, That curve will flatten. It's already showing signs of it. And we're only in the first or second week of of April. And um, so Australia is in a bit of a unique situation. And so that will result in the movement of people coming back. And I am planning, at least for Visa Solutions Australia, that when um, we get back to normal, it's actually going to be, it's going to be pretty busy. And it's going to be pretty busy because uh, a lot of those skills would have still been waiting. A lot of people are waiting to do stuff. And when the borders are open, they're going to crank it up again. Uh, there's a lot of people who um, will then go, okay, Australia's now open for business. Right, let's go. Okay, we'll, yep. we'll get, get into it. So I'm anticipating, you know, we'll, we're going to go through a tough patch, but then, you know, three, six, 12 months down the track, I think we're going to be a lot busier uh, down the track. Um, I think, I think, think you're busy. right, Dan. I think there's a, there's a lot of businesses that will be, mm-hmm. but I think there's going to be a lot of businesses that won't necessarily follow that in those footsteps. Right. Okay. Because if you're a um, cafe at the bottom of a high rise building, is everyone going to come back to work once this is mm-hmm. over and is everybody going to fill the building up? Yeah, they mm-hmm. probably will, but that may take three, four, five, six months. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who, knows mm-hmm. who knows how long it takes after we start coming out of this to actually get back to some semblance of normal? Well, mate, it's not going to come back in a, in a rush. I mean, everyone thinks, mm-hmm. you know, four months plus one day, you're back to a normal situation. But mm-hmm. in four months plus one day, it'll be a trickle at best. Yep. And then that has to build up again. And um I think there's a possibility some businesses won't won't come back. Yeah, you know, so a lot of small businesses. 
there's definitely been a disproportionate hit on the small business sector rather than the large business sector. I mean, I don't think your BHPs and your RIOs are going to be too worried longer term. They've got 10, 20 year time horizons. Yep. You know, if, a, if a place shuts down for six months, that's probably time for them to do all their maintenance, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is what a lot of them are doing. You know, my local cafe strip here in, in Leaderville, um, and you know, certainly all the places I, I visit, you know, in Sydney, um, those cafe owners are, um, if, you know, they're, they're not operating for three or four months. Um, mate, I don't think they're coming back. I think you're right. I think you're mm. right. Mm. So I think there's going to be a, a stack of opportunities for mm. people that have cash when we come out of this and can see an opportunity for those that don't make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which sound, it sounds pretty cruel, but I think that's the reality that there will be a lot of, a lot of opportunities further down the track. Yeah, no, there will be, I suppose, won't there? Money is very cheap at the moment, isn't it, Paul? I mean, the interest rates are down to zero. The governments around the world are trying to chuck as much liquidity into the system as possible. Um, what are you, what are you telling your clients should, is now the time to go and, borrow up to as much as you can? I mean, what's, what's the plan? Look, if you can get credit at the moment, you can get finance, get as much as you can, mm -hmm. even if you don't use it. Have okay. it there as a safety net, just mm -hmm. in case you need it. Mm -hmm. This pandemic takes 12 months. It's a, it's, it's, a different, it's a different ball game to what we're playing at the moment. Oh, wow, man, 12 months, we'll, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be past de depression time. It'll yeah. be 1929. Yeah, you know, three times over. Yeah. Yeah. And if we go into a total lockdown, mm. like they have in New Zealand, um, nothing's moving in New Zealand. You can't even do business online. Is that right? What the, yeah. I, I haven't kept up with New Zealand. What's happening over there? Oh, look, I, I haven't kept up with it that well either, to be honest. But um, I was talking to a guy yesterday in New Zealand. He said, you know, you can't even... A, a, a clothing store can't even sell product online at the moment because of the risk of the virus. Yeah, right. Okay. Yet they can buy Australian product that gets sent over there. Well, that's not fair. No, it's not fair at all. So there's lots of ambiguities in the market mm. that are making it even tougher for some regions or some, some businesses to actually try and find a way to move forward. Mm. Mm. Actually, just speaking about that, I've heard a few nationalistic arguments coming through um, because uh, at the moment there's only one manufacturer of face masks in Australia. That's yep. a Melbourne firm. And uh, they've gone from producing 2 million a year to I think 2 million a month, something ridiculous like that, right? Yep. Um, but they're the only um, manufacturer that we have in Australia. And so a lot more people are going, well, maybe we've given up too much manufacturing and maybe that uh, there are some essential things that we need to be producing here. Um, but that sounds like, um, it sounds like a lot of opportunities around that, that sort of, argument i suppose if it comes back and it changes the way people think i agree there's also the argument that um as the as other countries close down like mm. we've had china close um taiwan's restricted exports at the moment and bits and pieces as well so how do how do we get how do we get our uh, supply chains in order Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. you say, they, they've sent the army into that firm that are making face masks in Australia to help them out to get more production. Oh, right. Because okay. we're no. absolutely desperate. Yeah, right. Yeah. And there's so many other things that we probably just can't get at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Have, we, have we given away too much to overseas? Well, that's, that's what everyone's talking about now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. As, a, as a sort of rational economics person that sort of argument doesn't sit well with me but i can in the current environment i, I totally get what people are, are saying as well um and i think i think the other side of that too is dan that what i'm hearing and what i'm starting to see is that when these overseas supply chains start opening up again mm. it's going to be pretty significant price changes oh for sure it. it's going to be some, down, right? yeah so no the reverse, they're going up. Uh, a lot of product, a lot of product coming in is scheduled to have a pretty hefty price rise on it because yeah. there's still going to be shortages from different parts of the globe on right. certain products. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. they're taking the opportunity to make some abnormal profits on the way. Mm. 
And um, there's probably not a lot we can do about it because we don't have an option to buy locally on a lot of this stuff. I suppose I was thinking more the scenario about um, the airlines and they've got all their fleet grounded. And as a result, you know, the price of jet fuel has dropped through the floor and yep. petrol is probably as cheap as it's ever been, I guess. Yeah. Um, but at the other end of that, there's also those industries, yeah, where there's going to be price gouging and profit making, isn't there? I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm. But, um, I'm just asking all my, my mates about their headspace. Uh, working from home is a bit different. I uh, personally feel like working from uh, my lounge room is driving yep. me nuts uh, because yep. most of my time, you know, business development, I'm out there meeting clients, doing coffee shop catch ups, you know, heading down for a beer with you after work and, you know, um, normal sort of activity. And um, we're about to head into the Easter break and everyone is doing a staycation. You know, you yeah. might go from your lounge room to the family room and then back in the lounge room again. Yep, um, that's the way it works. How do, how do you handle the headspace? How are you advising your clients on how to manage their, their own headspace? Because you're still, at the end of the day, we've got to live here, you know? It's like... Yeah, you can't... Look, I think... Look, it's and, and it's, really, it's really difficult when you are working from home to actually get that break in your mm, life between personal life and work life. And you end up almost working seven days a week because it's convenient and it's easy to do. And, and you're I think, bored. There's nothing else to do. Oh, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> That's right. There's nothing else to do. Mate, for people a bit younger than us, if they want to get into the um, to the baby clothes and all the rest of it, I reckon they're going to have a ready-made market in uh, nine months' time. <laughs> but I think, yeah. I think for the rest of us, it's like, you know, like... <sighs> You're at home. You can't really go anywhere. I'm like a caged mm. lion at work. If I'm in the mm. office for more than a day and a half straight, yeah, I probably spend maximum two and a, half my time in the office, two and a half days a week. The rest of the time, I'm I'm like you. I'm out and about on the road. Mm. It's yeah. it's frustrating as all crap. Um, yeah, our, our dog's pretty fit at the moment because he's gone yeah, for a lot right, of walks and right. uh, <laughs> done done a lot of good things. He's uh, he's sleeping it off at the moment. <laughs> Hey, the dog's um, getting more treats. It's getting walked six times a day. Yeah, six <laughs> times a day, and all the rest of it. Look, I think um, meditation. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, meditating two, three times a day, yeah. just to just to keep the headspace clear, and that's going to help with your outlook on on your business as well. Because there's a lot yeah. of bad news out there, so I'm I'm not listening to the news. I'm doing a skim of the yeah, skim of the online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's um, it's a bad habit that I've gotten into because I have the Channel Two news running all the time. Um, okay. Initially, I just did it because I wanted to keep up on events. Um, but now I'm just finding it's just bad news all the time. I, yeah. uh, I'd, I'd much rather watch, you know, Netflix or Stan or something else. Yeah. Yeah. And look, that's that's one of the things we're doing is find a couple of good series to watch on Netflix yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to break the routine a bit. Mm, mm. But at the same time, like we, we, we have five people living in the house and we had five people working from home last week. That's wow. that's a big challenge in a house that's not designed. That's crazy, for, mate. <laughs> it yeah. just doesn't have five studies in it for people to work yeah. in. So I think some people just blink too hard as far as I'm concerned. You know, they just uh, <laughs> they've got to cut that shit out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look up, mate, I I'm seriously doing a lot of reading at the moment. Okay. All right. Taking a lot of time out to read. Yeah, yeah. And just what sort of what is what sort of stuff you're reading? I, I can see your book in the background, by the way. I uh, oh I yeah, look, I haven't read book. that for a while. Yeah, haven't yeah, read that no, one for a while. But, and if anyone yeah. wants that, they can get in touch with you, Paul, and you can uh, you'll send them out a copy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's online as well, isn't it? Your book. Yes. Yeah, you buy it in all the majors online. Yep. Is there a uh, is there an audio book version? Is there one where you've um, you've read the whole thing and people just can listen to it? Is that well, right? mate, that's that's actually my challenge for the Easter break is to actually record my audio book. Right. Okay. On my little little sort of pastimes, I'm going to be doing so. Okay. I'm, right. I'm ready to roll with it. Because that's what people are doing these days. They're, they're walking around the oval aimlessly, you know, doing 12 kilometres around the oval and just listening to audio books and other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which is which is a good thing if you if you are in that unfortunate situation where your business has had to shut down or go into hibernation, whatever the words are. Yeah. Right. Um, it's possibly a good time to do all the things that you're going to do in your business that you've never had time to do. Okay. Well, give me three things. Give me three things that typically you come across. First one is to upskill yourself because mm -hmm. your business line is only going to grow to your, to your level of skill. Mm -hmm. So yeah. audio books, reading books, all that good stuff have to do it. 
Um, how many people want to want to document systems and processes and have never done it? How many mm. people want proper job descriptions and employment contracts and all those sorts of things? Probably not the right one to talk about at the moment, but you know there are things that that people want to do. They've always filing, uh, always online filing systems that have come unstuck for some reason. Mm. Get them organised. Mm. You know, I'm I'm taking the chance to go through mine as well and to build my online, yeah. uh, to build my online filing systems. You know, mm. sort of rebuild them. Yeah, if you like. And how many of us want a, you know, a business? We want our, we want our vision, mission, and values. We want all those things sorted. Have we actually done them? You know. Well, that, that's a that's a tough exercise to do in the current environment. Well, no, it's a no, it's a, it's a really good one to do because no, it's a really good one, Danny. It's a really good one. I can see a customer in my future. <laughs> because it forces you to think about your business. Oh, actually, absolutely. actually, as you yeah. said, building it up, building it from the bottom up. Yeah. If you go back to your vision, mission, and values, what are, what is your business now? Yes, has yeah, it changed? Where are you at? Mm. What mm. do you need to do to get business? Yeah. And if your industry's gone, well, then find a new one. Find a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. All right, Maddie. No worries. Well, listen, uh, we might wrap it up there. Eh? Uh, yeah, um, really, absolutely. Really good to have a chat. Really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And um, not a problem. Anyone, huh? How, how, do, how do people reach you just in case they want to reach out and have a chat to you? Um, admin at the global is on email. Dot global. Is that dot right? Global. That yep. Dot global. Yep. Oh, okay. I'm not familiar with that one. That's um, dot net dot com. But yours is a dot global. Dot global. So if you have a look at www.thecashflowcoach.global is where okay. you find me. There's an inquiry form on there. Flick us yep. an email. Yep. Um, happy to chat to anybody. And look, Seriously, if there are people out there that are struggling, need to sit mm. down and have a chat, mm. the offer is there. Mm. Happy cool. to do it free charge just to get people on the right track, if it's yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, awesome. I recommend you to everyone, mate. Good on you. Awesome. All right, buddy. Um, listen, thank you for that. Take care. I'm just going You're to um, finish this up now.